Well, hello and welcome, everybody. This is your host, Ken D. Foster. Let me ask you, are you on a journey? If so, where is that journey taking you? Are you feeling more alive every day? Are you feeling more inspired? Are you feeling more in your heart? Are you feeling disempowered, maybe, or wondering what's next for you? You know, we're all on a journey, and this journey for all of us is leading us to become better versions of ourselves if we're willing to do the work, if we're willing to take some time to maybe go on a retreat or maybe daily go in and ask yourself some simple questions like, what's working in my life? What's not working in my life? What can I do to improve tomorrow? Or maybe take that quiet time every day to meditate and contemplate and go within yourself to really inspire greatness within you. Instead of waiting for others to inspire greatness in you, what has to happen for you to wake up alert, alive, and ready to take on an amazing day every single day of your life? Well, that's what my life has been about. It's been about truth, love, and courage since 1992 when I made the choice to change my life and to let go of anything that was unlike my highest values. And you can change your life like that too, right? But it usually takes a whole village to help us change our lives. It's not just us doing the work ourselves. So today, in response to many of you who are requesting amazing speakers to help you change your life in so many ways, I have a guest that's going to actually, I believe, kind of knock your and maybe help you to see things in a different way so that you could do things in a different way. Um, I'll be right back from my break. And when I do, I'm going to introduce you to that guest. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers. This free book reveals little-known secrets about annuity strategies that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. Call right now for your free book. And as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free, for calling Annuity General today. Call 800-510-0470. Hi, folks. Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your Social Security check may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every single month. Call now. I called to get everything I deserve. I called to check my zip code for a plan with a benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I called to check my zip code. Millions of people have called the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Call. Check your zip code, see if you're eligible, and get what you deserve. Call now. Call 1-800-374-2308. That's 1-800-374-2308 now. If you or someone you love has developed Parkinson's disease after being exposed to Gramoxone or any herbicide containing the deadly chemical Paraquat, you may be entitled to financial compensation. If you developed Parkinson's and worked or lived on a farm that used Paraquat herbicide treatments with Gramoxone, Firestorm, or any listed brand, call now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. There are time deadlines, so don't delay. If you don't win, you pay nothing. 800-771-3380. Welcome back to the show, and uh, I'm going to call this show today The Courage to Rekindle Your Instincts and Reclaim Your Sovereignty, 
And my guest today is Dr. Christy Vanacore. Christy, welcome for the, to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Ken. I'm really honored to be here. I'm excited for us to have a really meaningful, conscious conversation today. I'm, I'm looking forward to that too. And let me tell my uh, audience a little bit about you before we jump into that. For those of you that don't know Christy, uh, she is a holistic psychologist, modern medicine woman, a spiritual visionary and a sacred storyteller teller who weaves enduring ancient wisdom with modern science to empower individuals and families to thrive. You know, and I love that combination, Christy, uh, ancient wisdom and modern science. Um, how did you land on that? How did you decide to bring those two together? Yeah, so for me, it really started, um, you know, a number of years back when I experienced significant physical and psychological illness. You know, I, I was dealing with debilitating anxiety. I was dealing with a lot of physical ailments, autoimmune disease, lupus, um, chronic digestive issues, Crohn's disease, all of that. And all of the therapies were not working. Nothing was helping me, right? Nothing was fixing me. And everyone was throwing pills my way and traditional therapies my way. And at the time, I, you know, I was a traditionally trained clinical psychologist in this very um, sort of Western medical model that treats symptoms, right? Gives diagnoses, treats symptoms, and we medicate and band-aid symptoms. And um, that really never resonated with me. And I was working with clients at the time and trying to figure out a different way. I knew there was a piece missing. And then I was witnessing it myself. You know, every time I looked in the mirror and I saw this, this woman, I was a young mother at the time and I was, I was sick, I was sick. Um, and I thought, okay, there's something missing here that, um, that I'm not getting. And ironically, right after the birth of my first son, I started to have a lot of memories and um, at the time, I didn't know they were memories. I didn't know what they were. To be honest, I thought I was going a little crazy because <laughs> I was dealing with all of these illnesses and I had this newborn baby and, you know, I was just trying to stay afloat. But I was having these uh, memories of these experiences that I had had, some in a previous life, um, others um, in this life when I was a young child and I would be very much out in nature and I would be communicating with the trees and the plants and I would feel a very strong connection with, with spirit. And all of that had sort of gotten, um, I call it domesticated, right? It had been conditioned out of me through the years. And then after this really traumatic childbirth experience with my first son in which I almost lost my life, we almost lost him, um, the memories started coming back and I started to, you know, remember a time when I felt something bigger than myself, right? I started to remember this really profound connection. And so, you know, I, I, I then began to realize like, okay, I think I understand the missing piece here. And right around that time, I, you know, not by accident, nothing is by accident. I found myself in a healing experience with a woman who was a shaman and she led us on a shamanic journey and i had i had no idea what that was had never done that before and in that journey of you know connecting with my guides connecting with my higher self being in this place of you know remembering being in nature you know connecting with all that is um this this portal opened this, this door opened for me and everything began to change. And I started to see not only my own self and my own life and my own healing journey through different lenses, but also the people I was working with, right? And so I started to think, okay, wait a second. The same way that I'm going back to my roots, right? Remembering who I am, remembering where I came from, remembering the ancestors behind me, remembering my connection with the land. There's something in that, 
And that led me into a deeper dive of shamanic practice. That led me into a dive, a deep dive of eco-psychology. It led me to study anthropology. And that helped me to draw the really important conclusion, which was that what was creating such profound levels of chronic illness, right? Because I wasn't the only one suffering so badly at the time, you know, and now current estimates are that 88% of our population are um, suffering with multiple chronic illnesses. So at the time I thought, okay, the reason why this is, is that we have become so disconnected from the essence of what it means to be this spiritual being in this human body, right? We are spiritual beings having this human experience, right? But we've gotten so far away from what that means. And that term for that is called evolutionary mismatch. And what's meant by that is that we are currently living in such a way that is so remarkably different and at odds with our inherent genetic programming as humans, right? And it's in that mismatch that we're suffering, right? So we are we are using our bodies in ways that, that we never did before or not using them in ways that yeah. we never did before, right? Our minds are being forced to process exponential amounts of data and information so rapidly that never before in history was there, right? And so this is where a lot of us are finding ourselves sick. I, 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 a lot of people are finding themselves there. And I think that, um, you know, there is, there's this balance piece, right? Um, I can just speak from my own life. <clears throat> As I went through my transitions, I became a lot more efficient, a lot more productive, a lot less stress. Um, uh, and I'll tell you, the uh, the meditation piece for me was huge because that 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 was actually everything. That was the key to me letting go of and unwinding all of this programming that society had, had yes. you know so graciously given me. Right. And, and I think there's a uh, there's a piece that we want to talk about because. 88% of the population, you know, is significant amount of people that are stressed out, messed up, you know, diseased, uh, you know, and, and looking for their next disease to come along and get them, right? Right. So we are at a plate crossroads that we really need to be able to not only understand why it's happening, but understand the solutions of what we can do to change right. it up. I got to take a quick break. We come back. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about the why, and then we'll go into the solutions. We'll be right back. an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now if you or someone you love has developed Parkinson's disease after being exposed to Gramoxone or any herbicide containing the deadly chemical Paraquat, you may be entitled to financial compensation. If you developed Parkinson's and worked or lived on a farm that used Paraquat herbicide treatments with Gramoxone, Firestorm, or any listed brand, call now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. There are time deadlines, so don't delay. If you don't win, you pay nothing. 800-771-3380. CBD, you've heard about it. It's helping people relieve chronic pain, improve sleep, and reduce stress. But how do you find science-based products that feel right for you? 
Feel Good Hemp was started after the founders used CBD oil to help their dad heal from a three month to live diagnosis. They deliver all natural, lab tested, high quality products at affordable prices. So visit feelgoodhemp.org forward slash courage and be sure to use coupon code COURAGE25 to get 25% off your first order. Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm speaking with Dr. Christy Vanacore, and she has a new book out. We're going to get to that in just a moment. But right now, we're talking about cause and cure. Uh, we're really on the cause side of this right now of what's going on in society and why are so many people disconnected, feeling diseased, feeling stressed out, feeling tired, worried, concerned about what their life is going to be like. Dr. Christy, um, what would you say are some of the main causes that are contributing to this uh, disease society that we have right now? Yeah. So first and foremost, again, I think that we're all living such, you know, in such different ways than the way our ancestors lived and the way, again, that we've been programmed to live. So we have these lifestyle uh, changes happening. And what that's done fundamentally, right, it's, it's you know, it would be one thing to say, well, okay, you know, our ancestors rose with the sun and we don't, and that's why we're sick, but there's nothing we could do about it. But I really think it's important to understand how this evolutionary mismatch is really creating the suffering right inside of us. And what's happening is that being that we're living so at odds with our inherent programming, it's actually altering the structure. It's altering our brain. It's altering our molecular structure. It's really causing significant changes um, in our internal working models, right? And people, I believe, need to understand that. So when I look at, you know, these, these rates of illness and I look at the way in which people are living, these modern times, I call them very hyperkinetic, right? And whereas we used to value, you know, hard work and diligence and, and you know, perseverance, now our modern times seem to value speed. And so everything is happening really, really fast, right? We're even sacrificing accuracy for speed. Get it done, bulldoze through get to the next level. And the way that that's impacting us, right, is that it is completely dysregulating our nervous systems, right? So human beings, and, and I teach this in my rewilding program, right? Because for me, rewilding is about bringing people back to the essence of what it means to be human, what it means to be having this experience, right? And we're in this human body. And we are nothing more than energy, right? We're nothing more than pretty fancy uh, <laughs> electrical circuits and panels, right? Covered by skin, but we're nothing more than energy. And we have this nervous system that is this built in mechanism inside of us that is meant to protect us. And it's meant to keep us safe and protect us from harm and keep us alive. And that nervous system, you know, we were evolved with this system so that in the event of danger, our system would react, do what it needed to do to give us the energy in order to either get away from the threat or fight it off, right? And then once the threat was gone, we would recover. So it was this beautiful dance between uh, responding and recovering, responding and recovering. However, over time, right, when there's so much being thrown at you at once, the system never gets that chance to recover and it stays activated, right? So we're dealing with two problems here. We're dealing with these hyperkinetic times that, again, are causing us and forcing us really to have to move and live at lightning speed, okay? And again, process such substantial amounts of information that never before in history did we have to. Yeah. And then on top of it, what we have to remember is that we have all, regardless of our life story, and we all have a story, we've all experienced trauma at some point in our lives, right? And trauma by definition is anything that happened, it's an, it's an event that happened, right? A traumatic event 
is something that happened in which in that moment, um, you know, we, we weren't prepared for, right? It caused what I call like a blip in the radar. Our nervous system reacted, flight or fight was engaged, okay? Um, and, and then, you know, again, hopefully we recover. But when that's, when that survival energy does not get released from the body, it stays stuck and it stays stored. Now that's in the body, that's alive in the body. It's not in our minds, it's in our bodies. So now we take these bodies that are already coming to the table with some degree of stored survival stress, and we put them in these hyperkinetic times that are launching their nervous systems into states of constant dysregulation. And that's a recipe for disaster right there. Okay. I get it, I get it. I think my audience gets it too. So. This is okay. So this is the cause. All right. And um, by the way, I, I will share this around the cause. Um, it does feel like we're forced into it. But the truth is, everybody has choice. And we're choosing yes. to be in this hyper um, on, uh, I want to call it you're on all the time. You're just on all the time. There's no recovery time. There's no there's no space between the uh, the time you're on all the time. And I'm Speaking to my audience, because I know a lot of you are on all the time, right? So what we're talking about here is being aware of it, being realizing what it's uh, what the what the effects are, which is 88% of the population is now in a disease state of one way or of something or another, and now be able to, all right, let's look at what we can do to change this up, so you don't become a victim of the times, right? We have choice. All right, listen, I got to take a quick break. When we come back, um, we're going to talk about the cures and what you can do You're in your own life so that you can really change this up and be more empowered, have more peace, have more joy, and have more, hmm, I don't know, maybe a little more love in your life too. We'll be right back. If you or someone you love has developed Parkinson's disease after being exposed to Gramoxone or any herbicide containing the deadly chemical Paraquat, you may be entitled to financial compensation. If you developed Parkinson's and worked or lived on a farm that used Paraquat herbicide treatments with Gramoxone, Firestorm, or any listed brand, call now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. There are time deadlines, so don't delay. If you don't win, you pay nothing. 800-771-3380. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit thecouragetochangeeverything.com. That's thecouragetochangeeverything.com. Hi, this is Ken D. Foster. My guest is Christy Witt, uh, Vanacore, and um, we're talking today really about how to rekindle your spirit how to bring back your sovereignty in your life, how to be empowered so that you can accomplish those things that you'd like to accomplish, those dreams in your life, but do it in such a place where you're not sick at the end of it because you've been pushing yourself to the point, to the brink of stress every day. Dr. Christie, 
All right. You know, you uh, you have a different approach than a lot of psychologists out there yes. uh, as to how to maybe create some balance in our lives. Um, can you talk a little bit about this? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, I always so this, this program, <coughs> excuse me, that I've created that I've called rewilding. Right. Again, it's bringing people back to the essence of what it means to be human. Right. Bringing us back to our essential humanness, bringing us back even to some of the ways, right, that our ancestors did things. And instead of seeing them as antiquated, see where we can integrate them into our lives, right? Because it is in that mismatch between our inherent genetic programming and the way in which we're living, where all of these diseased states are, you know, are happening. And, you know, another point I just want to say quickly is that, interestingly, if you had gone to a shaman or a medicine person, and you were complaining of any ailments, that medicine person would ask you four questions. And they were, when did you stop dancing? When did you stop singing? When did you stop believing in the magic of storytelling? And when did you stop finding comfort in silence? And those four questions that involved singing, dancing, storytelling, and silence were considered, those four practices were considered the way that we connected with our soul, right? And the shamans believe that a state of disease or dis-ease, right, a state of unease in the body was because we were disconnected from our essence, from our soul. And the way to bring that back were practices that allowed us to sing, right, to use our voice, to dance, to move, right? to tell story, right? Which is sharing our story and passing down the wisdom of the elders and learning from one another. And then silence, which is the idea of unplugging from everything and going in, right? And getting quiet to really listen. You know, silence speaks the loudest as they say. So those four key elements really are a big part of the solution. So when I work with people in my rewilding program, it is taking these ancient, the ancient wisdom, right? This idea of, well, how can we get reconnected to our soul, to our essence? How can we reconnect with spirit and all that is? And how do we merge that with these modern scientific paradigms that will also help us to regulate our nervous system? right? And that's where something like somatic experiencing comes in. And I know we don't have time to go into, I, I could talk for hours about each one of these things, right? But somatic experiencing, the idea behind that is reconnecting with the body. Because when our nervous system is dysregulated, when uh, our physical body starts breaking down in disease, when psychologically we are experiencing anxiety, depression, attention deficit disorders, panic, all, you know, the list goes on. That all begins in the body. That is stored and stuck survival stress in the body. So the answer is not to go to the mind. And this is what really does set my work apart from most psychologists who say, okay, we've got to work on your mental health, right? This is in your head. Well, it's not in your head. It starts in your body. It is actually the dysregulation of the nervous system and the severing of our, of our inherent connection with our soul that leads our brain to then concoct all of those stories, all those narratives, like I'm not good enough and I can't do this and all those, all those thoughts, all those cognitive distortions that then lead to symptoms of anxiety, depression, and all of that, right? And anxiety and depression, I'm, I'm harping on these two for a minute because, again, of the large percentage of our population who currently are medicated for these issues. No one has ever told them that anxiety and depression are two sides of a dysregulated nervous system. Anxiety being you're stuck in a hyper aroused state, flight or fight. Depression, you're stuck in a hypo aroused state. That's freeze and fawn, where you're in paralysis, right? So if we work at the level of the body, okay, and there are very, there are specific sort of micro practices, as I call them, that we could do with the body to bring our nervous systems down to a state of regulation to get us out of that hyper or hypo state. 
right? And then there are more macro practices that we can do that help to expand our capacity in the nervous system so that even though we are living in trying times, we are resilient enough to forge ahead and not well, only yeah. survive, but yeah. Uh, let me let me question let me question something on, on this because I think I think you make a really good point and I really like what you're saying about um, getting back to our our nature you know it's kind of spirit and dan nature dancing together and you know with dancing and singing and storytelling and silence it's it's beautiful um, but are you saying that the mind is not important or are you saying we need to start with the body? Um, because from my point of view, I, I think wisdom is the greatest cleanser of all of our diseases. And you're giving us wisdom here. So I'm just wondering where the mind fits in here. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting that you bring up wisdom, right? Because um, what I've learned along the way is something that, um, you know, early on in my life, I always struggled with. I'm, I'm a knowledge seeker, right? I'm a, my soul is, is naturally, you know, this scholar seeking knowledge, thirsty for knowledge, right? But how do we turn knowledge into wisdom, right? It's through embodiment. So here's that word body again, right? It's by really embodying it. It's by living it. It's taking that accumulated information and actually living it through the body. So the body is important. So no, it's not that the mind is not important. Of course it is. Absolutely. But if we want to get to the root, right? So another, another way that I um, practice very differently than most psychologists is I want to get to the root, right? I don't want to band-aid symptoms, right? You know, so there's a lot out there now about mindset coaching, you know, and look, we know that thoughts become things. We know the power of intention, 100%, right? But if we want to really understand where thoughts come from, we have to look at how the mind and body work together. The way in which a human takes in the world is through their five senses, right? The way we see and hear and taste and touch and smell. And when that information initially comes in through the body, it's neutral. All sensation is neutral. But the mind, based on past experiences, right, when maybe there was something traumatic and the alarm sounded, right. once the mind makes an interpretation of it, it is no longer neutral. Now it's judged as something. Oh, this experience was good or this experience was bad, right? Or I'm a failure or I'm a success or you know, all the judgments that the mind makes. So yeah, the mind is important and the stories, the narratives that the mind create are important. But if we really want to work towards changing our mindset sustainably, right? In the long term, we've got to start with the relationship with the body. We've got to start with the place where the information initially comes in, training our mind to allow our body to just experience sensation neutrally without reacting to it. So, so much of what I teach people day in and day out is non-reactivity, not reacting to every little thing. Again, this hyperkinetic environment that's throwing so many things our way, we don't have to react to it. Now, you mentioned choice before. And I love that, right? Because all of life is choice for sure. However, it's really hard to say, well, I'm going to choose to not react to this when your body, when your nervous system, right, which is the fundamental bodyguard is saying, no, we have to react to this because if we don't, you could die, right? And that's how the nervous system thinks. It's all or nothing. It's you're either alive or you're going to be dead. So if we're fighting against this inherent processing in us, it's going to be that much harder. You know, and this is why I have people who come to see me who have been in therapy for 15 years and have gotten nowhere. And they sit on my couch saying, well, is this going to be another 20 years of talking about my mother did this and my father did that? And, you know, I just have to change my mindset. If only it were that easy. And so this is where I take people in through that somatic work. It's the only thing that will lead to that meaningful and sustainable change. And people can do this themselves every day. So I don't believe that a person should be sitting on my couch for five years, maybe not even five months. We are all self healers. And that is another fundamental fact of what it means to be in this human body. But we have been conditioned away from that 
right? We would put a lot of companies out of business if we could just heal ourselves, right? Well, listen, I, I got to take a break. And um, when I come back, I want to talk about the book. And um, I want to talk a little bit about maybe some, uh, maybe a tip or two on the self-healing side of this that we can give the audience. So we'll be right back. And uh, this is fascinating. I'm really enjoying your, your uh, talk here today, yeah. Christy. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The tax doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a tax doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. If you or someone you love has developed Parkinson's disease after being exposed to Gramoxone or any herbicide containing the deadly chemical Paraquat, you may be entitled to financial compensation. If you developed Parkinson's and worked or lived on a farm that used Paraquat herbicide treatments with Gramoxone, Firestorm, or any listed brand, call now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. There are time deadlines, so don't delay. If you don't win, you pay nothing. 800-771-3380. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit thecouragetochangeeverything.com. That's thecouragetochangeeverything.com. Well, welcome back to the show. This is Ken D. Foster. I'm interviewing uh, Dr. Christy Vanacore. And uh, by the way, Dr. Christy Vanacore has a new book out. I'm putting it on the screen right now. It's called Rewilding. And uh, before we get into the book, uh, for my listening audience, where, where can they get Rewilding, uh, Dr. Christy? So Rewilding is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Goodreads, basically where all books are sold, even a lot of local booksellers. I love I love working with local booksellers. So, um, but all of the links to purchase are through my website, christyvanacore.com. Okay, great. Well, I, I'd like to ask you, and I think this ties into that piece uh, that I just mentioned before we went to break about some of the maybe solutions or ways that people can practice their own self-healing. But uh, as they read the book, what are some of the benefits that they're going to walk away with? Mm. So, you know, first and foremost, this book is my story, right? So, you know, people say, well, you know, what, what genre is this book? Is it self-help? Is it memoir? You know, and I would say first and foremost, it's memoir. And the reason why I'm really proud of that is because sharing our stories is so incredibly healing, right? So I mentioned before, it's one of those universal healing salves, right, is storytelling. And for us to find within ourselves the courage to look at our lives, to, to own our story, and to share that story, right? Because in living our lives, we're accumulating that wisdom, right? We're taking the knowledge and we're embodying it. And that wisdom is not ours to keep, it's ours to share. So this book um, is, you know, it was never my plan to write this at all. Um, I never intended to be an author. I had clients who would tell me all the time, the, the world needs to hear your story because I use a lot of my own personal story in my work with clients. Because the way I see it is that I can't ask people to go deeper than I've been willing to go myself, 
right? And I need to show people that I'm still doing the work. I can't ask them to do it and then opt out of it myself. So first and foremost, what I'm hoping that people get out of reading this book is um, the ability to um, look at their own lives and look at their own stories. And instead of looking through the lenses of shame or doubt or anger or uh, resentment or victimhood, to look at the treasures of their life as beautiful gems. And, and that doesn't mean that, you know, we like everything that happened to us. But I always say that life happens for us, not to us. And so I'm hoping that first and foremost, that people will get out of this the courage to examine their own life and their own story through those lenses. And then Beyond that, you know, um, I, so this book is, it's very honest, <laughs> it's very raw, it's very real, um, and it's the story of how I took myself from sick and broken to, you know, to healed. And when I say healed, you know, this is not like I've reached some, you know, uh, place where, you know, I, I, I figured it all out, you know, I have some certificate of completion. It's not that at all, right? But um, I really resuscitated myself and really reconnected myself with my essence and other people can do the same. And this story really documents that journey and, and even the parts of the journey that were hard, even the parts of the journey that were, you know, that were a challenge, even the parts when I wanted to give up. You know, some people say to me, well, you know, you're this psychologist and you have all the degrees and this must have been so easy for you. And I'm like, oh, God, no. <laughs> right. So I want people to see the realness in it. Right. That healing is can be messy. Healing can be ugly. Right. That that it's not all beautiful. It's not this place of we're all ascending to reach spirit, you know, but it's very authentic. And it's very raw. Christy, I have a question for you. Um, as a result of doing the work, um, mm -hmm. what? how's your life changed? Like, what are the benefits to individuals that read this and they go, I'm going to do the work? What, what's happened for you? Yeah. What's changed? So, I mean, the, the word that keeps coming up for me is resuscitation, right? And, 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 I, and I honestly, that, that is a word that I mean, you know, one could say very metaphorically, but I also mean it literally because I was close to death. I was on a, an intravenous three times a week at one point and, and hospitalized, right? So, so this, this was an actual literal resuscitation as well, as well as a metaphorical one where suddenly all the pieces came together, right? Suddenly in working differently with my mind, body, spirit connection, I was able to heal some of these ailments that, that eluded doctors for so long. Like, we don't know what to do with you. We don't know how to fix this. We don't know how to help you, right? So there's so much opportunity there for reconnection with oneself in order to heal oneself. There is also for me, you know, um, when when this whole journey really started for me, I was a young mother mm -hmm. and, you know, I had wanted nothing more than to be a mom, you know, and I have two boys and and I thought, you know, I want to be the best mom that I can be for them. And, you know, a lot of my clinical work through the years have uh, has been with parents and also with children. I do a lot of work with children and teens. And whenever a parent would come to me and say, you know, what is the number one thing I could do for my kid? I'll, I'll do anything for them. What is it? And I say to them, do your own work. And so in doing the work, in rewilding ourselves, I say that rewilding a parent is the greatest gift you can give to your child. Because if you want your child to grow, if you want your child to thrive, you want your child to embody and exude confidence, right? If you want your child to be healthy in mind, body, and spirit, where, where does this begin? It begins with us as parents. Granted, they're on their own journeys, but so much of what they're seeing and absorbing and they're learning is with us. Well, I, I think, I think what you're saying, you know, it's, it's that if you want to change your child, you want to change your family, change yourself. That's it. Your yeah. relationships, my marriage, you know, marriage, your your relationship with your children, my relationship with my mother, my family of origin and proof, my connection with my purpose in life, right? So I had been helping people, but I was not helping people uh, from this place of integrity and authenticity. 
And it wasn't until I really connected with myself that I could offer the fullest extent of myself to other people. I, you know, I, I think that my audience can uh, uh, relate to this very deeply, Christy. And I think that mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for you, if you're listening to Christy right now, you might want to ask yourself, you know, what are the results I'm getting in my life right now? You know, do I have chronic disease? Do I have, uh, when's the last time I exercise? Do I have uh, relationships that are working or not? Do I have a career that I love? Do I, you know, do I have something inside of me, like a book that I want to uh, write, but I haven't done it before? You know, I always ask people, look at the results because I think it's a good place to start. But yeah. then once you realize that, and this isn't about making you wrong, it's about just, you know, where you are. It's just an assessment. But right. once we assess, then it, it's time to take that inner dive that Christy's talking about. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that place where, um, and we don't have to do it alone. You know, I, I think that's the big, the biggest challenge for so many people. Um, for instance, if they want to get a hold of you right now, Christy, um, where can they go to just just get a hold of you and go? I'm ready to do some of this work. Let me let me talk to Christy. Where, yeah. where, can, they, where can they reach you? Yeah. So um, through my website, christyvanacore.com, my email is, is on there, christy at christyvanacore.com. My phone number is there, um, email, all of my social media handles. I'm on Facebook at Dr. Christy Vanacore. Uh, I'm on Instagram at um, Vanacore Embody Your Wild. And I love talking with people um, because, you know, whether you work with me on some kind of ongoing basis or just ask a question, I... I am here as a guide and a mentor, right? You know, I really believe that I help others through the light of my wounds. And so I, I would love, you know, to connect with anyone who is saying, yeah, you know what, maybe I have lost my, uh, my spark, or maybe I've lost my essential connection with my creativity, right? Or maybe I do, you know, have some strained relationships in my life or, you know, or there are many people who say, you know what, I, I don't know what's missing or off, but something is missing and off. I can't quite put my finger on it, right? But I wake up every day and there's some unrest inside of me, you know, and that's really how it started with me. And yes, I had sickness, but there was this unrest in me saying, I know there's more. I know there's a deeper sense of purpose for my life here on this planet. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm here to help people with uh, on all of those paths at every step of the way, because we aren't meant to do it alone. Humans are relational beings, right? We're pack animals. We are meant to do this together and in community. And it's so much a part of why many of my offerings are collective healing experiences. So whether it be in person or whether it be virtual, coming together in a community. And I always tell people, I'm a part of that community too. I'm not, you know, sitting here as some like ascended leader or master, right? I'm still doing my work every day. You know, I just came back from an eight day personal retreat to go within my own self, to explore my own blocks and my own shadows. There's always work to do. And as long as we're alive, there's always a story to tell. So you aren't meant to do it alone. So absolutely reach out, connect. Um, and, uh, you know, we have so much to learn from one another. I learn from people also. I learn so much from my clients every day, and they're really who inspired me to write my story. Well, Dr. Christy, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, we really do have to collaborate and uh, work with each other because that's where we get inspired from each other. So one last question. Um, it's a big question, but um, and we only have about a minute left, so... What is your message to the world right now? Hmm. So what I want everyone to know is that we are all self healers. We all carry the innate ability to heal ourselves, to take care of ourselves. We have everything that we need right within ourselves. And so in order to reconnect with our innate self-healing capacities, it's time for people to get curious. We need a society of people who are becoming conscious, who will wake up to become awake, alert, and aware. So my invitation for everyone is to, you know, when you've got that feeling that there's more to this, that there's something else for you, that there's got to be a better way, there is. So start to get curious. Start to ask questions. 
question everything that you've ever been told, all of the conditioning, all of the domestication. And it can start very simple. Take time during your day, every day, to orient yourself to your surroundings. Pause, use your five senses, notice what you see, what you hear, what you taste, what you touch, what you smell. Get curious about your outer world, get curious about your inner world, because everything that we've been taught to believe is an illusion and there is more for us. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, man, we're out of time. I want to thank you so much for being here. Uh, Put your book on the screen again real quick. It's uh, uh, Rewilding, Mm -hmm. and you can get that on Amazon or uh, other uh, where other uh, great books are sold. So Rewilding by Dr. Christy um, and uh, Vanacore, by the way. Dr. Christy Vanacore, don't forget that. All right. (laughs) Thank you so much, Christy. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, Ken. It was an honor. Had a great time. And for all of you that continue to watch this show, I encourage you today to go out and touch the life of one person. Have them listen to this broadcast. Have them uh, be able to tap into what you're tapping into so that they can see the unseeable and know the unknowable and do the impossible. Until next time, take care. 